So, so what is it then? What's what? What we're doing? We're doing a podcast. What's a podcast? Well, the podcast is with me and you, and that we're talking about all things Tenerife. With other people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guests all the time. That's what that's what it is. That's what we're doing. Oh. We discuss this. And how and how many how many we're doing? Well, mate, we say, weekly. We say it's going to be a weekly podcast. All right. Okay. Um, what's a podcast? Doesn't break the Tenerife podcast. It's the 1st of September. Pinch, punch, 1st of that month. Pinch, punch, get your head kicked in. That's what we did in Newcastle. <laughs> and it's a brand new podcast. Do you know what a podcast is now, Daz? I do know, yes. Yeah. I do I'm Rick, by the way. How are yeah. you doing? I'm Daz, and this is That Tenerife, Tenerife Podcast. podcast. Yeah. Ole! Like where are we? Where are we? Oh, we're in Bojangles. That's where we are. Um, Bojangles is one of the bars that has managed to uh, reopen after... The, uh, the lockdown that we had here in Tenerife. The, state, the in, state of emergency. Yes, the state of emergency is now over. over. Um, we're in Los Cristianos, we're in a working bar. Um, we are, the reason why we decided to do a recording from here is because we have a guest this afternoon that's gonna come down and see us, and this is their local. Yeah, Sarah Wagstaff, let's get her name out yeah, there. Let's, Sarah, let's get her Sarah. name out there. Sarah Wagstaff, she'll be joining us a little bit later, and we'll be having a, just a, a chat. And uh, well, uh, You know what I like about that, Sarah Wagstaff? There's gonna be some people listening gonna go, Sarah who? Sarah who? Do you know what? I out of the south of Tenerife, probably people don't know who she is. Of course, they don't. Like they don't know who we are. This but in I, Tenerife, but she's a bit of a superstar. Like a phoenix rising from the flames. When lockdown happened, um, it was March the seventeenth. Was the day that she actually uh, decided on social media to open a page up. And the page that she did was maybe one that you guys use at uh, you know that are listening at the moment. It was called Tenerife Lockdown. Yeah, and, and, we'll, we'll, and we'll, it's the, yeah. the people that were on it. Just, we'll go to that a little bit yeah, later, yeah. but the amount of um, people that are on that page is just stupid. It's, it's, it's incredible. Stupid. I, I don't even know. I don't even know uh, hundred people, and <laughs> but she's got absolutely thousands, thousands of people thousands. on there as well, which is really. By good. the way, though, how did your lockdown go? To be honest with you, and it might be uh, maybe disappointing for some people. I had a great lockdown. I really had a great lockdown. And it's, Why? Some, but the, the awkward thing about it is, it's actually sometimes difficult to say. It is because I had a great lockdown. Uh, the reason I had a great lockdown was because it gave me time to spend w- with my wife. Well, I'm young and in love anyway. That's, well, that's of, course, that's what of course. But what the reason the idea of the podcast was be we're fully aware that some people um, out you know in in Tenerife actually didn't have a great lockdown. And during these podcasts, that's what we will be talking about. Hundred percent. About, Absolutely, because mental health is extremely important, and that made me wanted to do something like this, but also to um, to champion the people that made celebrate, it easier. Celebrate the people. What was what amazed me, as I said, was March the seventeenth was the date that I remember, and it was from there the people that rose, especially on social funny media. Enough, can I just put in? Funny enough, I remember that because I was here. What in Bojangles? At midnight, <laughs> and it was the last night. Yeah, that doesn't exactly surprise was, me. Yeah. That doesn't that surprise doesn't me surprise at all. Me, but. but we were, you know, it's, it's from there the amount of people that rose on the social media platforms and actually brought stuff to. Okay, we're locked down. How do we then, um, you know, diversify and still entertain and still bring something to the, you know, to the public of Tenerife that will actually aff- affect people in Tenerife in a positive manner. There's a lot of things, a lot of great things that come from it, even though it was a really depressing time because we were stuck in, in the house for five months, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, was the um, the live shows that singers put on, that entertainers put on. You see, again, that's something else that I'd love to, can't, can't wait, you know, be able to get to speak to. That's Hayley Butler, I think, she's the one that sorted that. It was... Um, what was it, live from the... Live from the lockdown. Yeah. Live yeah. from the lockdown, she did again, and it was where, all of a sudden, all the Tenerife entertainers that you used to go out to watch in the, in the you know, in the bars and restaurants at night, um, but their jobs stopped and it was then well hold on let's let's put this online and let's start you know let them start showing what they can do there and actually keep people like our set like myself just a normal you know Joe nobody just keep me keep me entertained as well to watch it and do it and you know for me there's many a time that I thought you know they put the PayPal's on there and there's a bit of controversy about the PayPal's but I was like no crack on if you want to if you want to buy that person a drink they are that good go and buy them a drink yeah it got that, it got bigger as well not just Tenerife it Massive. got like really like all over the place it went, it went, I think it's gone across uh, across Europe as far as I can see because I know there's other sites that have been doing it as well. Yeah, there are. But yeah. uh, for me, for, from that for me, it was from that. life in the lockdown was one of the big ones that came through. Tenerife lockdown is Sarah, which I, I'm so looking forward to seeing. As she should be turning, you know, she should be coming in, in the next uh, next ten minutes. Yeah, absolutely. But it's um, just to speak to these people and just saying, you know, well done, Pet. Well done for what you did. You've kept people like ordinary people like myself entertained. 
the thing is, yeah, I listen, you know, I, I don't watch a lot of TV. I listen to a lot of radio, and, you know, the radio that I listen to always tends to be a lot of doom and gloom about this is the cases, this is how many cases we have. The actual fact is that the flip side of the coin is people going, yeah, we're in this, we're in this, you know, situation at this moment, this world pandemic. Let's see what we can do about it to entertain people and yeah. keep people happy. And through adversity, as you've just mentioned, through adversity comes salvation in a, in a yeah. respect, I suppose. Yeah. And that's what I, it was amazing to watch people go, okay, I've had enough. We've been in lockdown for so long, I'm now getting really unhappy. Let's do something about it. As we've touched on already, mental health is a very important part. Yeah. And the reason why we're doing this, because we are celebrating the people that have meant something. I wanna, I wanna, yeah, I want to look into that a little bit more and investigate that a little bit more. And it's, it's, it's more from the point for myself is because the lockdown that I had, it was I was in a new relationship, it's all new for me and everything. Yeah. You know, it's still, I've still got a rainbow and I've still got pretty roses at the bottom of the garden. Yeah. It's other people haven't had that. And it's those sort of people that I'd like to find out from because if you understand your fellow man and what actually they've been up to and what they've had to go through, you know, it makes people a better person. It gives a better understanding. It shows that other people in that situation are not alone. And it means that they've got to, um, you know, really, it, it gives other people, it might inspire other people to do other things as well. Absolutely. As you can hear, there's some rustling. Yeah, but that's a live bar. Yeah, yeah, it it's is. A it's a live bar, man. It's great. You know, um, I've got my pint of you. Yeah, I have. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, cheers, Naz. There we go. But this is what it is. This is what the idea was. And as I say, it's Richie, you know, we, we're uns it is unscripted. It is more about to see what spontaneous we can create from it and to see if it's interesting for people. I mean, one of the first things I want to discuss and talk about, though, before we start is really what's it like in Tenerife at the moment. Me personally, I'm living up on Golf del Sur. Um, that's five minutes from the airport, out of town. Yeah. You live, well, we are actually in town at this moment. Where is it? You, where are you based? San Antonio, um, which is just outside of Las Americas. Yeah, up, up the bit, isn't it? Up the just hill. up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just up a little bit. Uh, do you know what? Okay, let's get the obvious out of the way. It's quiet. Yeah. But. People are still going to work, people are still going about their business, and um, people are wearing the masks. Well, here in Bojangles, we've got a couple of tables full already. That's it, yeah. There's still people on holiday, but it's still, yeah. it's okay, it's still okay. Yeah, you've got a quarantine when you're going back, but that, you know, let's not, let's get that to one side. We know the difficulties. Uh huh. But it's not about that, is it? It's oh. basically about we are getting on with our lives, kind of thing. I've got the big question. Do you have to, the people in the UK, do you have to wear your mask when you sunbathe on the beach? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> And I'll tell you now, no, you no, do not. No, no. Jesus, Somebody no. Somebody asked me the other day, do no. I have to wear a mask when I go in the pool? Oh, my God. No, you don't have to. Look, yes, <laughs> the rules come through. The rules Seriously, come, somebody asked me that. Did, like, you sure? Yeah, they did. Holy the God. rules come through, and we've all got to look at the rules and understand the rules. And because the rules come through in Spanish, because we're in Tenerife, we've got a... Go to of, Karen on Facebook and Karen try and get it. Facebook, no, listen, yeah, we yeah. don't use... One thing, if you're in the UK, please don't listen to Karen on Facebook. Yeah. There are official sites on Facebook that you can actually use I, I personally I, I speak a bit of Spanish but for the English for me N332 yes, I found was an absolutely one brilliant one uh, Janet Anscom um, yeah, her Canarian website Weekly. Yeah. Canarian Weekly Canarian well. Weekly is really good um, they t I think they tend to get it from Janet Anscombe and I think they do you know they, they collate from a lot of different uh, different web yeah. government websites so it does come up with some uh, really really interesting stuff um, I just saw that they did the uh, they did the video yesterday I think it was one of their radio DJs was on the beach and also doing a video on YouTube about what can be done uh, what you need to do when you're in Tenerife, if you're thinking of coming over to Tenerife, you know? I suppose when you think about it, there's a lot of mixed messages back in the UK about yeah. what you can and can't do here. Yeah. So it's got to be conveyed across that road. Look, this is what you can actually do and you can't do. It's, you know, I spent ages trawling through the rules when they come out because I like to know, be, was it? To Cla be you, four you clarity. Four yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, clarity. I like to know exactly what's going on. So yeah. I spent a lot of time reading the rules and the rules are not as harsh as people think. I, I leave the house, I put a mask on to get to the car, I'm in the car, take my mask off. Yeah. I drive to wherever I want to go, I put my mask back on, yep. I walk into a bar, I sit down, I take my mask off. And then and I spend it. the afternoon having a nice afternoon with the mask off. Yeah, that's that, pretty much how it, and or the restaurants, that's pretty much what the rules are dictating at this moment in time. It is, and that's exactly, and apart from that, there's not much else. No, it's just a lot quieter. I mean, I came in, as I say, we're in town. I came down from the golf, and I was actually thinking as I was driving down how much quieter the uh, TF1 is. And Which is brilliant, oh, by the way. Brilliant. What, it's incredible. I mean, they still managed to drive like idiots, some of them. But Absolutely. But we down, still saw two crashes just on the way here or something like that. But down by Guaza and stuff like that, the, you know, if anybody knows the Guaza turn off just before oh. it goes back up the hill again, there's nothing on there at the moment. And sometimes one part of me just goes, I really wish it could stay like this. But then the flip side is, look, we need the tourism. 
time, um, the entertainers they need, the public. We, I need the public in my, you know, the jobs that I do, and it's, it's this, the island needs it really just to get itself back up off its knees. But it's, how, all of the businesses, well, ninety nine point nine percent of the businesses here in Tenerife rely on tourism. Yeah. So we need the tourist job. It's as Absolutely. simple as that. But this island wouldn't have been created without it. Correct. But this is more. I mean, we, we've said this. We want these podcasts to be more about the celebratory Absolutely. thing of the people that have made that difference in this dock. This is dock times. This is the one thing that's actually come out of it, which has absolutely amazed me. Is when you're talking about some of the darkest times in. Let's face it, it's world history because it's going to come to go down and this will be in the history books in years oh, to come. Absolutely, absolutely. It's the people, the unsung heroes that have come out of it. And, you know, we're mentioning Sarah is going to be, for me, is one of them. And that's the reason why I think it's really important, as do you. Yeah. There's many others on this island that really need to do it. And, you know, I was listening to um, some other forms of media where it was a negative trip all the way through. I, I stopped, I turned off the UK television over here year, months ago because I just couldn't do it anymore. It brings you down, doesn't it? It oh, brings you down. Man. But there's people on the island as well that were bringing us down as well. Yeah, but, yeah. And it's like, I want to move those out of the way because those are the people that are getting the airtime and give the airtime to the people who've actually entertained, have actually brought something to the table to normal Joe public like me, because I am, that's all I am, just yeah, normal yeah. Joe public. And I've sat there on a day and gone, my day has been made better because of this person. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. Boy Jungle. So our guest today, like we, we said before, was Sarah Wagstaff, and she's here. The she's Sarah Wagstaff. She's Hello, a bit Sarah. nervous, everybody. Go easy. Yeah, Let's go easy nervous. on her, Dad. She's a bit nervous. How are you doing? Are you all right? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Very, very okay, good. Okay, so we're here in your logo, which yeah. is Port Jangles, and we have your drink, which is? A pint of oh. beer. Cheers, Sarah. Thank Cheers. you very much. Thanks here we are back me. in Port Jangles <laughs> with the lager. The lager is flowing. A couple of things though, Sarah, that you don't know. One of the things that I do, I'm actually quite fastidious in what I do, and I'll actually try and study and make sure I get it right, the things we do. I've I've been stalking you, Sarah. I like I've a been stalker. Stalking. You like a stalker? I like a stalker. Well, in nice a good way. way. <laughs> you don't think outside a window at two o'clock in the morning. Right, <laughs> correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Let me tell you about Sarah Wagstaff. Sarah Wagstaff, you studied the aquatic zoology at the University of Hull. I did indeed. Is that right? Yep. Uh, you're from Watford? I am. Somebody has to be. Uh, no. Your fella, your fella is Adam Walsh. He is. You went to Queen's School. I did. You you've have got been a, stalking. You've got a brother called Scott. I have. A dad called Gordon. Yes. A mother called Linda. Yes. You've even got an auntie Val. I have. Fair enough. Everyone, everyone's got an auntie Val, sir. I've she got an auntie Val as well. Have. I think I've got one. So and floorboards. Here's one for you though. Do you know what your Facebook motto was? No. no, no I didn't think the so. Watch the language, mate. You. Just effing love oh. life and make the most <laughs> amazing memories. Is that about right? It's very true. Is that about right? <laughs> yes. Okay, really good. <laughs> Do you, know what you, do you know what your favourite quote was? Something from Sarah from yeah. university. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Anyone above the age of 60 should be burnt for fuel. <laughs> and we're telling you good things uh, about this, you Sarah. Know what? I quite like that. <laughs> 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 oh, I no. thought, to be honest with you, I thought it was absolutely class. How about this though? Because it's not just all about Facebook, because we're going to talk about that in a second. Yeah. We'll also talk about the other social media platforms. The last time you used Twitter. 29th of August 2016. Well, that's oh, talking on another level, haven't you? Well, I'm looking at the Sarah. <laughs> that's it. I would trust the one with one account, more than one account. Do you remember what it was that you put on Twitter? No. You put on a yellow Mustang on a, and you called it Monday Car Porn. <laughs> and it was a yellow Mustang. I love Mustangs. Yeah, so do I. It's my favourite car, to be honest with you. Do you remember what your Twitter slogan is? Be fearless, be fabulous, and love yourself first. Yes. Were you 13 when you wrote that? That's what I want to know, because that's no. like a proper thing. <laughs> okay, we'll now move over to... In look, you've gone shy. You've ah. gone a bit red. I'm red. You've gone a bit red. We're going to move on to Instagram. Yeah. What about Instagram? Do you remember what the quote you put up there? About how you describe yourself? Is it not the same as Facebook? I'm a, no, no. I'm a Watford girl living in Tenerife saying yes to every, every adventure. adventure. Of course. Get in, well done. <laughs> and your last... The last post, sorry, your first post on Instagram. Do you remember what your oh, first post on Instagram? It's not as bad as what you think, Sarah. It's not as bad as you think. One quick question. Aww. Who's the dog? That's Abby. Who's Abby? She was my rescue dog. I rescued her when she was 10 after I had a back operation. Oh, and you put that on, actually, on the 26th of December, 2013. Yes. That was your first she Instagram was my, post. She was my baby. I went looking for your first Facebook post. The yeah. trouble was, after about an hour and 15 minutes, I gave up because I couldn't scroll <laughs> that far enough to you get there. got back to June. <laughs> well, that is, a good, that is a good link into what we're going to discuss next. You said that that was a rescue dog. Yes. 
what is your connection with rescue dogs and why? Why, from, let's go from the beginning, why have you got such an affiliation to want to do as much as you can for rescue dogs? Because they have no voice. Neither do you, speak louder. They, oh, <laughs> sorry. That's sorry. Right. They literally have no voice. They, um, there's, we, can I save life pause? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, We've got 64 dogs at the moment. We've rehomed so many in the last uh, three months and they're just, they're beautiful animals. They're loving, they're friendly, they're your sole companion and they just, they need to not be in kennels. Absolutely not me to be in kennels, and they're so beautiful. And it's the like, what's it called? Paws. Live paws, rescue animals, Tenerife. And that is a rescue centre that is. Where is it? Where is it located? It's just past Park de la Reina. So you go through Park de la Reina. You've got the go karting on the right. And yeah. There's a tunnel on the left. I think everybody knows where the go karting yep. is. Yeah. Yep, so. <laughs> and then from there you got the tunnel on the left. Tunnel on the left. You go under that, turn right, and it takes you around to to where Live Paws is. So, how long have you been working at Life Paws? Uh, I got involved uh, about 18 months ago with Hayley Butler when right. we climbed up Tady to raise funds for them. You've climbed Tady? Yeah, oh, two day trek. Do you know what? I saw no, no, just, oh. Let's just pause on that bit for a moment. It was freezing for you up there, wasn't it? Was it was minus four when we yeah. got up the next morning. Minus more. four in <laughs> Yes. It was absolutely roasting at the top and we saw the most glorious sunrise ever. Yeah. Um, but Hayley, uh, myself, Adam and Jock from the Whiskey Jar went, went done the two-day trek up there and it was just amazing. Would you recommend it? Yes, but only once. All oh, right. So those ones, right. <laughs> the, yeah. The views are outstanding, the achievement's outstanding, but it is tough. Very, right. very tough. So let's go back. So, sorry, yep. I digress there for a moment. Um, live paws, you were raising money. Yeah. And then? So I got involved with um, the Dog Walking Club, which is, it alternates now. So it's Monday and Friday on one week, and then it's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday the following week. Um, I got involved with the Dog Walking Clubs, and then I took over the social media from the beginning of lockdown. So on, sorry, on Facebook, the social media for Live Paws, yep. is there a page? How do you find the page on there? It's called Live Paws Rescued Animal Tenerife, and, uh, and it's I, on Facebook. Facebook. That was purely for everybody else yeah, to listen yeah, because yeah. personally, <laughs> Shelley follows it all the time. So look at this, she keeps wanting to bring a dog home every single two minutes. Go on, Shelley. Thanks, thanks to you, Sarah, it's all down to you. Just a quick one though, just let's go back even further. Mm -hmm. When did you first arrive on Tenerife? Uh, three and a half years ago. So you've only been here three and a half years? Yeah. Do you know what it is, Daz? When people put a footstep on somewhere, like on an island, the size of the footstep that you've put on Tenerife, in my eyes, in the, over the last three and a half years, has been actually quite incredible. Aww. And that it was seems the reason. Like been, yeah, it seems like you've been here about 15, 20 years. Yeah, yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Thank so three you. and a half That's years really ago, kind. you came here. Why did you come to Tenerife? Oh, personal reasons. Oh, <laughs> everyone's got a story. We're everyone's just, got just a story. Did we're you bring the suitcase? Step. Yeah, I just, it was a last minute decision. Let's we'll, leave it at that. We'll just overstep <laughs> that land, right? But when you came here, did you have any idea that the sort of stuff that you'd be doing now is mm. compared to when you first arrived? No, not in the slightest. I, I came here with literally just a suitcase and thought that I was going to be, I stayed with Kerry Routon and I thought I was going to be here for five weeks possibly. And to be fearless, be fabulous and love yourself first according yep. to Twitter. According to Twitter. <laughs> I learned how to do that over the last three and a half years again. Actually, it's, it's, honestly, it's been one of those things as a, I was, we've been talking earlier with me and Daz, me being a sideliner just watching from a helicopter from Golf del Sur looking into town yep. to see what people are up to. You were one of the people that really shone out for me as a, as a, as a nobody on the island really, just as yeah. Joe Public, to see what you've been doing and that's hence the reason why I wanted this conversation. If I want to take you back first of all, really, just again to, it was the 17th of March. We mentioned the date as earlier, and that was the date where the lockdown came. Yep. Now, if I really had to count how many people I know, personally, at a push, I think I would know about maybe 40 people. Mm -hmm. You've got a Facebook page as of today with 14,208 people that on it. Really and that is just like absolutely, <laughs> stupidly ridiculous. It is, I've got one question. Is. What membership number am I? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> no idea. Sorry, I'll find out though. <laughs> How did, what made you come up with that in the first place? What was the drive behind that? So I just wanted my friends and family to get through lockdown together. And obviously I live here in Tenerife, so I started a group, and I think it was probably two days after lockdown started. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just wanted to get everybody together and put positive vibes out there and keep everyone together as a community. And I did never, never expected it. I know, but did that, was that born as a seed one morning you woke up and you went, 
I'm going to do this. Yeah. Or was it, really? Yeah. Just literally as spontaneous Just as literally that? literally as spontaneous as that. It's incredible because, as I said, I remember seeing it right at the beginning and I went, oh, I'll join that. I didn't know it was you. Yeah. Tenerife locked down. I know Tenerife. It's locked down. Yeah. We're in lockdown. <laughs> Let's do it. And the next thing now, there's people most probably all over the globe Yes. Listening, and again, the reason why we, me and Daz, decided to first our first person to interview should be you, is because fourteen thousand people need to know who you are, okay. and that's the reason why we did it. And yeah. again, it is it's a massive credit to you for what you what you've been able to achieve from there from it. How do you how are you finding yourself? How it's managed to the influence? How it's grown? How are you thinking that? It is crazy. There are days when um, there are people that can be a bit sly and nasty, but the majority of it, yeah, it is all jokes. It's happiness. It's bringing the community together, um, and it's bringing up everybody. Um, literally, like you say, there's people in Vegas in, on it. Oh, I've never there's been to Vegas. I'd love to go to oh, Vegas. I have. You got <laughs> married there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got Paris, married in Vegas. Yes, that. you did. Oh, you in go. the Paris Hotel. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so going back then, um, before you introduced the world to tennis uh, lockdown, yep. was it difficult? Was the fear of lockdown difficult for yourself? For me, no. Not in the slightest. Because we talked about this at the, at the beginning of the show, and we've loved lockdown. Yeah. I had a great lockdown. lockdown. I generally had a like, great lockdown. We're the lucky ones. Yes, I, very, you know, very lucky. That's, that is the, that's the right word. We are the lucky ones. Yeah. I, would, I was, for me personally, I am. Um, I always see the glass full, not empty, half yeah. empty. I see it half full. But it doesn't do you any harm to realise that other people do struggle sometimes. Yes. And I think you brought that to light with... The, the page, the Tenerife lockdown page, because it, you know other people can then express themselves how they are, and yep. then it became a community. Yeah. And how have you found, did you realize that that was what was gonna happen with it? I didn't realize it would grow so big, mm-hmm. but there are people in there. When does this go out? When oh, this, go this out? is gonna go out most probably maybe, we're in the beginning of September, September the 1st, so it could be next week. That okay, so I can say this. Yeah. So tomorrow, I'm gonna be on the beach at eight o'clock in the evening, and I'm helping, I'm going to bring out champagne to people that are getting engaged. He's going to ask her tomorrow. Oh. And I got a message last week that I organised a photographer. Give us a name because it's not going to help. I don't actually know. I know the mum's name. Yeah. But I don't What's know. mum's name? I'm sure it's uh, Marjorie. Marjorie, I'm sure that's going to be amazing. <laughs> they've asked you to do they've that. They've asked me to help. They oh. asked me about a photographer. Do I know a photographer? And I was like, yes, 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 I do. This is so exciting. Thank oh, that's you. That's amazing. That's amazing. So are I'm just going to walk up with the champagne. You're so walking up with the champagne? Yeah. yeah. And what beach is that? Uh, Fanya Bay. In Fanya Bay. Oh. You should get down there, Vita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get a note you are. Unfortunately, Daz, I think this is going to go out most probably oh, next yeah, week. So we might have missed yeah. that one. I hope, listen, the guys that have just got themselves engaged, I hope you're listening and I hope you had a great uh, engagement. It sounds I'm absolutely sure it amazing. Was fabulous. It sounds absolutely amazing. Daz and Rick, the Tenerife podcast. We are here in Bojangas, of course, with Sarah Wagstaff, our guest this afternoon. Rick is, um, be- beaver in the way, you've been just pressing loads of buttons and stuff. <laughs> oh, you know, look at me. I, I like to call myself the producer. I'm like the, the Will I Am, the white Will I Am of Bojangles. <laughs> the white Will I Am. You say that? I'm like William. The William, yeah, the William of Bojangles, that's me. Now, you wanted to do a shout out, didn't yep. you? Tell us a little bit about that. So, during lockdown, my mum has been making face masks for uh, uh, deaf people, so they've got the plastic um, covering of the mouth. Is your mum here or back in the UK? No, she's back in the UK. Oh, brilliant. Um, And she has been uh, giving them out for people that are deaf, so they can still lip read. Oh, wow. She's been making uh, nurses scrub bags to give to the NHS nurses, so where they can take their clothes, they wear their clothes, they take their... their, um, when they got their scrubs, they can put them in the bag and they can just go straight in the washing machine when they come back. Oh, I've seen them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, a great yeah. idea. He's been making them. My dad has been working in a food bank via his church, so he got a letter from Boris Johnson to say thank you. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Crazy. That's amazing. <laughs> that's really really good. And um, for my aunt, she suffered two heart attacks during lo- the beginning of lockdown, wow. and that was really 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 tough for the whole family. What's your aunt called? Uh, Patricia. Give her a shout out. I love you, Auntie Patricia. I missed oh, Auntie Patricia yeah. off the blog right at the beginning of the intro. I missed, sorry, Auntie Patricia. All the best, my sweet. <laughs> Let's go back then. Let's go back. So you've come from a family that like to help? Yes, most definitely. And has that been ingrained in you from a very young age? Uh, yeah, definitely. Is that the ethos yeah, of the yeah, family? Absolutely, kind of thing, yeah? absolutely. Give what you can. 
um, even if it's your last pound. Because you also do um, things for homeless people. Yes. Who's the Who's the guy with the dog? Mateus. Mateus. And was that in Los Cristianos? Was it the other? Who's Mateus? Have you been stalking her as well? <laughs> no, no, think, tell me about Mateus. Mateus is a 52-year-old German guy who um, I, I know that because I got his passport uh, for <laughs> safekeeping. He sits at the corner of Bojangles and he is a lovely man. He's just lost in his way and he's he's got a dog called BB and she's beautiful and uh, we used to make dinners for him when he was around here. He's now living in Los Gigantes. We've been up to where he's and just to make sure that he's safe and is okay and we've been to see where he's living now. So he's now. decided to relocate? Yeah, but he wants to come back this way to be near ah, Los right. lot again. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking because Los Gigantes might be older and therefore with the older people down in Los Gigantes. Yeah. Right? yeah. He realised there's nothing happened. So he thought he'd come, come, <laughs> come back to the hip hop of Los Cristianos. <laughs> he's a bit too young to be in Los yeah. Gigantes. Yeah. He misses the Veronica's a bit too yeah. much, even though it's closed at the moment in time. This is kind of what I'm getting getting that there's not and I mean this with all respect there's not many people like you that will see a guy that's homeless and you will do your utmost to make sure that he lives his best life I think you might be surprised yeah I think you will be surprised because there's a lot of I'm quite vocal about it on social media because I want to inspire someone else to do the same. You did that with me. You certainly have done that with me. Thank you. Well, you've um, definitely you've definitely caught the you've definitely hit the radar because that's the reason why we wanted to do it. And yeah. I genuinely genuinely believe that that's for me. As far as the golf, looking back, and now across the most probably across Europe as well, people are looking at what you do, and that's why you need to be known. People need to know who you are as well. I yeah. think it's brilliant. Go back to so you were saying that um, there's a lot of people that don't put it on yeah. social media. Is that yeah. Right? yeah, 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 totally. Because you totally. think an island like well, the, the south of Tenerife, it's in my line of work, it was always dog eat dog, and you don't really get to see that side of a person I, until you put that on social media. Um, I have one lady who is very well known on the island, and she doesn't want it put on anywhere near social media. Um, but she, when I first started giving out stuff to Mateus, I put it on Facebook. Yeah. And she came up to Bojangles at the, uh, at the end of the night and dropped a carload, but she didn't want anything on social media because she's been in Mateus's footsteps before. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. That's absolutely incredible to know. These it. are the stories that yeah. people need to know. Obviously, she doesn't want to be named, no. but that's fine. But these are the. Well, hopefully, she's listening. She get, you know, she's getting the recognition that she doesn't want, but she deserves. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. She yeah. got so many cuddles from me. No, that seems absolutely <laughs> incredible. It really is. Just giving you a little bit of an insight into my lockdown, uh, Sarah. I actually have two girls who are 19 and 16, and one of the things a father's pet hate is that they just, you cannot get them off the bleeding telephones. They're on the phones day in and day out. Well, my lockdown, I actually started turning into them. I actually started doing the same, and every time I went on the telephone and went on like, you know, the social media, I got myself into all that, I kept seeing your blinking name. How many, <laughs> how many pages do you actually have on Facebook? How many have you got? I actually don't know. Well, I know you don't know, but we <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah, we do. We do, and we'll tell you. We've already mentioned Tenerife Lockdown. Tenerife Lockdown, you has up, sorry, have as of about five minutes ago, you got 14,208 members. That's awesome. I know. It's I know. absolutely awesome. What member number am I? don't know. No, no, I know. No. <laughs> walk and Talk. Walk and Talk's one of the new ones you've yep. done. Explain about what's Walk and Talk. So, um, I have had Paula Dawson's dog for the last two weeks while she's been in Turkey. Shout out Paula Dawson. <laughs> um, and it made me realise every morning that I've been getting up, going for a walk um, for half an hour, I've been able to clear my head. So yeah. um, I put the group together after some um, unfortunate posts of people not feeling the best on Facebook um, and for people that have gained a little bit of weight over lockdown. So trying to cheer people up again yep. and yeah, get yeah, people yeah. out yep. exercising. Yeah. Do you know what I found out that exercise is very important? Oh, it's crazy you important. Do, you don't realise being a Well I know I've been following I've been following your your well, blogs yes, on YouTube. That's a different we'll hold that for later. We'll talk about that yes, later. Sorry, yes, well you've been doing fantastic though. Oh thank you. You're very <laughs> welcome. So it was just basically if anyone wanted to join me on a walk and that they could offload some of their problems. Um, I can soak it all in and it doesn't it wouldn't bother me in the slightest and it's all private and confidential clearly so there's your page number two yep page number three let's make food 55 members on let's make no, food I like this one <laughs> yeah yeah I thought you would Dad. I thought you would How, what's, what's the story about this one so let's make food was um, for from me Hayley Butler and Stephanie Taylor uh huh so we spoke with each other about Noah's Ark um, and happy to help and through lockdown they have had an amazing so amount of food just explain what's Noah's Ark Noah's Ark is a charity in Porticolon that help homeless people 
Right, okay, and what, so literally do people go to them and do they know how to reach out? What, yeah, what? they've got a facility that people can turn up and take away food. And that's in Puerto Colón? Yep. In San Luis South? And, and what's Happy to Help? Happy to Help is a charity that's run by the fabulous Stephanie. Uh-huh. She basically works with vulnerable families on the island and helps them with, now she helps them with rehoming schools, issues, um, women's issues, uh, men's issues um, and over lockdown she primarily focused on making food for them. And all this can be found on social media? Absolutely, And yeah. so, let, let, I mean, for the people who are not social media savvy, you'll go onto Facebook and in a search bar if we ta- if you typed in Noah's Ark yep. or you typed in what was Happy, it? To, Happy help. to Help it would all be on there for yep. them as well. Yep. That's absolutely brilliant. There's a massive undercurrent, isn't there, of these things that, that we've just touched on before. Sarah is almost the voice do you know what, of these <laughs> As we were talking earlier about our lockdown, and for me, I've, you know, I think I've been privileged enough to say I've had a good lockdown. Um, yeah. I've had support yeah. from family as well, but I've had, you know, it's been a good lockdown for yeah. me. But the, the, I can only imagine the, the the tough times that some people have had, and yeah. I don't even know that these charities exist or these people are there to help. I don't like using the word charity because these people they don't see themselves as a charity; they see themselves <laughs> yes, as there to help people. Yeah. And that's just that's the reason, like yourself as mm-hmm. well, more than anything else. Tell me about All Things Tenerife, Sarah. You've got 561 members on All Things Tenerife. I've told you I've been swatting. <laughs> i told you. All Things Tenerife was a group that I just wanted to promote good things about the island. And um, it's kind of taken a back seat since uh, Tenerife lockdown because I've been posting all everything in both groups. But um, So yeah. All Things Tenerife was before the lockdown? Yes. You did that before the I lockdown? I think it's been about 18 months now for that one. Right. So you thought All Things Tenerife was going to be the one that was going to do it. And yep. then Tenerife lockdown just came <laughs> smashed in and smashed it, it out the park. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and just go, oh my God, oh my God. Because there's one thing I want to tell you. There's a, I, don't give pe- I don't give anybody advice. I'm going to give you some advice. Okay. I'm a big fan of Spider-Man. Okay. And as Peter Parker's uncle said, yeah. is with great power comes great responsibility, Sarah. Like, yes. How does that feel wearing that on it your shoulders? It is quite scary. I have to make sure everything that's posted is legally correct. Yeah? Yeah. Sometimes you get it wrong. Sometimes, sometimes I do get it wrong. But that's the, that's um, the great thing about it because it's not a, it's not a website. Sorry, it's not a, a page where it's telling you everything legal. No. It's just a page of going. This is what's going in Tenerife, yeah. and people can post on what they feel about it. Yep. Has it helped you at all this as a person? Yes, absolutely. How? Because we've all got our little, we've all got our little. I suppose not mental. Using the word mental health, it should be used a lot more. But we've all got our own demons to put to bed I suppose yep. everybody's got their own little ones and for me entertaining and helps put a lot of them to bed did this help you keep busy it kept me so busy during lockdown so the dogs and the, this group kept me so busy during lockdown it was brilliant was that important for you yes yeah. Yeah. yeah so you can say in a way that this has actually also helped your yes. mental health going yep. getting yourself through the lockdown as well 100% so that, that's incredible going out to help somebody else has actually helped yourself yep. when you look at it in that light yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's absolutely that's, that's really really interesting it really is so what's next for Sarah then? What what's on the horizons? What we've got because you're doing you're so busy. You've got so many groups going and all that. Is that it now? Are you done? Or are you think? I bet it's yourself, not. You know, I, I, bet it's I can see. Look at her face already. I can <laughs> tell. So for me, I've got I've got five pages. I've got like forty gazillion people following it. I'm done. On social, you're an inf- you're one of those people of like Love Island. The influencers, <laughs> yeah. are you getting the money? Are you getting the no, money? No, no. I wish it Send was. her the money, people. Come on, <laughs> give her a couple of Gucci watches or something like that. But so, what have you got? What's your idea? What do you think? Um, I am in the middle of starting a YouTube channel. Oh, she's going global. I'm going global. Oh, wow. <laughs> massive, massive. The YouTube channel. What's it going to be? Um, Sarah Wagstaff Incorporated. No. You can have that, by the way. That sounds too much. <laughs> With a dollar sign. <laughs> Um, a lot of my childhood friends called me Waggers, so it's going to be called Waggers World. Waggers. Waggers what? Waggers World. Waggers World. I like it. It's got a ring to it, definitely. I like <laughs> and Waggers And it can World. also incorporate the dogs, because wag and tail. Brilliant. So you've got a great idea. Yeah. Incorporate all, but what's all it gonna of the things you do, is what's it? it for, what's going to happen? Um, it's going to have all the rescue uh, stories for the dogs on it. Right. Fabulous. Um, and then just promote everything that's good about Tenerife, because we've got a fabulous, fabulous island, and not enough is being said of how blooming brilliant it is so if you were if you were now listening to this and you're not on Tenerife at the moment and you were thinking to come to Tenerife what would you say how would you advertise Tenerife now what would you say we've just got the sunshine we've yep. got beer on tap yep. we've got we're the beaches <laughs> we've, exactly we've got beaches you can lie on what yeah. more do you need for a holiday yeah you've got your friends you can as long as your family's not over 10 people you can sit around the same table yeah um there's a lot. There's, there's still a lot to go for. There's still a lot to do. You can still go out on boats. You can still do quad biking. You can still go scuba diving. Yeah. Everything. You can still do it all. I've, I mean, to be honest with you, again, I've, 
I've also well, we're friends on Facebook and I've seen some of the videos of you out in the water. I've seen the turtles. I've seen oh, the dolphins. Oh, that was incredible. Was that good? Yeah. You I'm that? going kayaking again on Thursday. I can't wait. Yeah. So you're going a kayak. Where do you go kayaking from? Uh, Palmar. So from Palmar, which is obviously on just to the left of Los Cristianos, yep. for people who are aware of Tenerife, from between Salens, no, Galletas and Cristianos, yep. you'll find Palmar. It's that, yeah, it's that way, you take yeah. a kayak out there, yeah. and out there, with how far out do you have to go before you start seeing this? Uh, not very far. Really? Ten minutes on a kayak. That's Ten it. Ten minutes on a kayak. Bearing in mind, you're going against the waves as well. So 15 so for Daz then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 10 minutes in a kayak. I kind of do 10 seconds in a kayak. I'm cup size. It's so man. much fun. It's, really? Yeah. You, you're all, not, uh, you seem amazing. to be such an adventurous person. Um, have you always been like that? Yes. Yeah. The positive. I, you, know, you know what somebody says? If you've got the highest of the highs, you're going to hit the lowest of lows. I can't see that with you. I've had the lows. Really? Yeah. And we go back. How far do we go back? Three and a half years. And you've worked on that to get yourself now to the position that you're in? Yeah. Sarah, absolutely massive credit to you. I think it's been, as I said, what I've seen in the last seven months with what you've done has, um, from I call it the helicopter view because Golf Del Sur, we're away from town, but I'm watching what's going on. Brilliant, commendable to you. I'll give it a round of applause. Yeah. Oh, I think yourself you. as well. Fantastic. We've got one final question for you, Sarah. Yep. Who do you want to see interviewed on one of our podcasts that you feel has been worthy and positive for Tenerife? Oh, that's a tough one. It's not probably actually. No. No. Oh. Just you. Is that it? No. 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 <laughs> Nobody no. else. Nobody else. Just <laughs> me. <laughs> Thanks you. a lot. Thanks for having You've me. You've been listening too. No. There's been plenty um, of people out there. My, my partner in crime, Hayley Butler. Hayley yeah, Butler. Uh, yeah. You know what it does? We mentioned Hayley Butler before, Sarah. We did, yes. Yeah, we mentioned we did. that 100%. as well. Hundred uh, percent. There's another really lovely lady called Stephanie Tudge. Stephanie. She fronts Tudge. up the Happy to Help and you cannot meet a nicer person she's insanely generous with everything so I'll mention it to her I will we're looking at Sarah and do you know what else you could do yeah Mateus Mateus really my my homeless dude that's a great idea does that mean we're going to Los Gigantes road trip trip. Is, do you speak English? He speaks very Fantastic. good English. Fantastic. I tell you what, Sarah, as what you've done for us, because of what you've done for us and Tenerife on the island, I will make it a job that we will actually ask these people to see if we can get them back on, uh, on our I show. I would love to get the publicity from Mateus to get him a job because that's what he wants. Is that oh, the next yeah, that's, step? That's making a point. That's well, making a point of doing that. Uh, Sarah, that. Um, from me and Rick, we just want to say thank you very much for being our first guest. Thank you yeah, very thank much. Yeah, thank you for being the first guest. Well, thank you for nice. inviting me. And... Um, We'll get you back in probably a year's time, and we, we'll we'll have the best of podcasting. Be <laughs> Waggers World, Waggers World, World will be Waggers famous. World, yeah. global. It'll, be on, it'll be on ITVB and everything like that. So ITVB. Well, yes. <laughs> well, yeah. ITV, sorry, ITV One, Two. Thank I don't know. You. I don't watch. <laughs> yes, yeah, so on behalf of me, Rick, thank you very, very much. That's and Rick, the Tenerife podcast. How cool was that with Sarah Wagstaff? Was awesome, way? wasn't it? It was good, awesome. wasn't it? Really, really enjoyed it. What, what do you take from that, Daz? Um, it's the unsung heroes. The, well, we, we, we talked about this at the beginning of the show. The people that you have no idea how helpful they've been to everybody. Like, like Stephanie, uh, Stephanie Tudge was mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, people like this who... These are the people that we need to be talking, about, that's, talking to. That's the, that was the whole idea of the podcast. What amazed yeah. me was how humble... Uh, Sarah was when she came in and sat down to be on. She felt honoured that we were talking to her. Do you know what? Yeah, I felt honoured. I was talking. I was talking to her. You know what I mean? It was the yeah. flip reverse, really, more than anything else. Uh, the most unassuming people are the most awesome of people. Without shadow of doubt, I think she was. She was brilliant. They, deser- yeah. they de- absolutely deserve the voice. And you know, to come down to her local down at Bojangles, and it's just a day on a. You know, what day are we on to Tuesday today? It's Tuesday. Today. Yeah, many thanks. Many thanks to Peter and Sam as well. Yeah. For being lovely hosts. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam, Thank for you, looking Sam. after us as well. It's been absolutely and thanks great. Thanks for doing that thing as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Sam's voice, by the way. She's going to be internet famous. She will um, be. But what's going to happen on the next one then? What we're going to do because we're going to do this again, obviously. We are. We're good. Yeah, we're going to do this again. Um, we, the, it'll be another bar. Another bar. It'll be another bar. Oh, look at which this. Which means more drinky poos. Um, <laughs> it'll be a, a guest that we're not going to. We're just going to give the game away just yet. You right. Know what I mean? Okay. There's a couple it's of people that Sarah's given us an idea as well. I want it for future. Yeah. I mean, no, we're we're going to do more of the like, same. Yeah. Yeah. More. More of the same. More of the same. Different bar as well. Staying in the south of Tenerife. Unless we get an offer to go north. Well, that's it. You see, if we get on tour. Down to Gigantes with Mateus. Oh, road trip, yes. Road trip. <laughs> Thanks uh, for listening, guys, though. Um, on behalf of Rick. Yes, thank you very much. It's been great. And myself, Daz, it's been great. Um, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Adios. Daz and Rick, the Tenerife podcast.